All right, welcome back, everyone. We got a lot to talk about tonight. So, guys, I, I first of all, I want to get your comments on Bill Self, and I just think this guy did a miraculous job. What they went through, and then they had to go out to Boulder, then they came back, they flew to Washington D.C., and they came back. And those kids, the effort that they put in Saturday night, emotionally, they had to be drained. They had to, they really did, didn't they? Yeah, and a tremendous leadership from Coach Self, and obviously, he's a steady hand. I mean, he's always the same. The guy never changes. He is. The guy you see on the sideline, he is the guy you get all the time. And I think the stability from the head coach on down, it was polar opposites as far as coaches are concerned yeah. on Saturday, okay? Yeah. Bill Self and Frank Marr, but Bill Self has done a wonderful job. Yeah, and, he, and, and I looked at the minutes of these guys I got. Selby, mm -hmm. the freshman, was on the court longer than anybody Saturday night. Played 27 minutes. Everybody played 20. Nobody played in the 30s. He's got this all figured out, doesn't he? It's a balanced team. I noticed yeah. 180 from a week ago. You, you like Kansas now. Well, yeah, I think they're pretty good right now. Yeah. <laughs> Today you do. They're doing all right. Get back to us in a week. We'll see how you're feeling. About. But, yeah, no, they, they're pretty good. Selby, obviously it's important how he's playing with this team because he's kind of their new point guard. I just saw you surprised. Yeah, yeah. Here. well, you know, let's see. You sort of caved on Missouri. So we're sort of, you know, wondering where you're going with that. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. You guys had plenty of time to work on it. Yes, we got it all figured out. How about the Morris twins, guys? Uh, they, they were pretty darn good, weren't they? Yeah, they were, and uh, they really were after underneath. They still don't defend that well, but they certainly go after the basketball uh, on, uh, on the boards. I'll tell you the guy what, Markeith Morris has been terrific. The only thing that Marcus does better than Markeith is score. Okay, Markeith does everything else better than Marcus, which is just incredible. That's how far that young man is. And they weren't shooting threes the other night. They, they they got them inside and they did all their work. I think KU only took like 10 trays, didn't they? Something like 5 or 10 in the game or something like that. For me, that was the depressing part for Kansas State. You know, I really thought they were turning the corner because their first two conference games, they were getting up 75 points a game and they lost those two. Then over the next four, they were down to 65 points a game. It looked like they were going to be a defensive-oriented team that maybe could rebound and stick with teams, but then they give up 90. Just a huge step back for them. And I mean, we got to wait and see. Obviously, they got three winnable games coming up here, but defensively, that was the depressing part. They were giving up layups, dunks. It was bad. Yeah, Frank, what's going on with this K-State team anyhow and this Curtis Kelly thing? I mean, right. it, this is a senior guy, right? He couldn't even get off the bench couldn't even get in the game this is a good ball player yeah there's no leadership on this basketball team period uh curtis kelly is supposed to be one of the leaders when uh, dennis clemente left last year they and uh and dominique sutton they, they tremendous hole for this basketball team the head coach hasn't helped any okay well, he's the kids, saying it's my fault right, right. he's been right. saying that for the past week it's my fault it's my fault yeah, but it, the, the, there's no leadership. And when, you know, we, we asked him last night after the game was over, what happened to Curtis Kelly in the second half? He went, next question. And then Jacob Pullen came in later, and he said, hey, if you don't practice, you don't play. So he's outing his own teammate. So they have tremendous problems here. And like you said, Jack, they don't even have an NIT bid now. And this is not a rivalry anymore between these two teams. Mm -hmm. Was it 42 in the last 44 yeah, yeah, games Kansas not. has won? That's not a and rivalry. And it was embarrassing. It, it Very really was embarrassing. Saturday. All right, let's, yeah. let's move on to uh, Missouri. I, you know, I haven't given up on the Tigers, <laughs> but I, I'm going to be honest with you. They cannot win on the road. And if they oh, yeah. can't not win on the road, they're not going to be any good in this league. This is a huge problem. You and I were talking about it earlier today. This style of play, it's always kind of been the knock on it that you just can't play as well with this attacking defense style for 40 minutes without a home crowd behind you. The other thing is you need to rebound on the road to win. And as far as defensive rebounding, they're 11th in this league in that statistic. Overall rebounding, they're okay. But defensive rebounding, they struggle. And we saw that with Texas yesterday. All these offensive boards, second chance points. That's why they're losing on the road. Not to mention the one assists from their starters. That it was it makes a difference. And, Frank, when I look at this, this Texas team is better defensively than a lot of people think. Missouri scored 58 points. I know they didn't shoot well, but there's a reason they didn't shoot well. They scored 58 points. It's about 30 under their average. There's better chemistry on the Texas team. We talked about this last year, and we've ever seen with the Rick Barnes team, and they're playing like it. And, Jack, they are playing for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament right now. Mm -hmm. Remember, that number one seed will take them through Tulsa, San Antonio, Houston is the Stay final four. Texas. So yep. they really have some incentive out in front of them. And it doesn't mean that Kansas can't get a number one seed because I think those two teams will be ranked fourth and fifth in the top ten when, when tomorrow's polls come out. So they both still have a chance of being in a number one seed. So. All right, guys, I really think it's a two-team race. Let's take a mm -hmm. look at this. I mean, the top two teams and A&M, we saw what happened. I know A&M's got a big game at, with Texas tomorrow, and that is at College Station. So they got a chance of winning that game, but I still 
think it's the top two right there. Texas is the clear favorite right now just because they've already knocked off the two best teams in the North. They've beaten A&M once. That right. being said, we mentioned it before, and I'm sure we'll say it over and over again, only one team's ever run the table in Big 12 play in the history of this league. So Texas, probably not going to do that. I don't think they're that dominant. They'll probably drop a game, maybe two here, but... That being said, I don't think Kansas is necessarily going to run the table either. So big lead for Kansas right now, but Can or Texas and Kansas certainly still in it.